Good afternoon and welcome to today's session of Imagine America Radio, our continuing Career College Exposition <laughs> webinar series. My name is Bob Martin. I'm the president of the Imagine America Foundation. Joining me today in today's session of Imagine America Radio is my foundation colleague, Lee Doubleday. Lee, Double, Lee Doubleday and I are excited about today's career topic, automotive technology, sponsored by Universal Technical Institutes, or UTI. UTI is the country's leading provider of high quality career focused education at 12 locations nationwide. UTI is also a 20 year sponsor of the Imagine America Scholarship and Award Program, having provided admissions based financial aid to more than 15,000 entering Imagine America students. Without taking valuable time from our presenter, let me refer any and all inquiries about the Imagine America Foundation to our website, www.imagine-america.org. Or you can call or email either Lee or myself at the information on our website. Automotive technology careers are some of the most popular programs in career colleges. And since our beginning in 1999, Imagine America remains a leading provider of scholarship aid to enrolling high school students. However, our country faces a serious shortage in certified automotive technicians. We hear from employers in virtually all sections of the country desperately looking for more qualified employees, so we need to do more. Our partner in today's presentation is Universal Technical Institute. And joining us today to discuss in detail the looming automotive technician shortage and how UTI is helping meet this need is Dr. Stephen Coyle. Dr. Coyle is a nationally recognized expert in this area with an extensive K-12 background. Before turning the program over to Dr. Coyle, let me very, very briefly outline today's agenda. Today's session of Imagine America Radio will be 30 minutes maximum, including questions and answers. Once we finish these remarks, we move directly into today's presentation. All participants can submit questions while the presentation is in session via the Q&A feature in this Zoom meeting. At the end of the presentation, or approximately 2.25 p.m., we will present any and all questions offered by the participants. We will address as many as possible and provide written responses in follow-up emails. We will have a hard close at 2.30 p.m. So without taking further time out of today's presentation, let me turn the session over to Dr. Stephen Coyle. Dr. Coyle, the floor is yours. Well, uh, thank you all very much for spending the after part of your afternoon with me. Um, I'll get right into the agenda because we have a short amount of time. It'll be threefold today. So we'll start off with challenges facing the workforce. We'll follow that up with opportunities in the transportation industry, and we will conclude with Universal Technical Institute's career pathways. I always like to uh, start with how the uh, workforce has changed from the 20th to the 21st century. You can see in the 20th century, we were very much an agricultural manufacturing economy with a little bit of service in there as well too. You see in the 21st century, we've just totally gone uh, almost exclusively, exclusively to service. That doesn't probably surprise, probably surprise any of you out there because if you own a house, you own a car, you own a washing machine, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, it's very difficult to find people to work on things, let alone someone who's qualified. Uh, so we very much geared there. And, you know, you can even use this when you talk about going to a restaurant. You go out to eat. You've probably experienced this before. And they'll say, well, it'll be a 45-minute wait. And you look, and there's eight tables open. They just don't have servers. So service is very much a huge part of our economy today. I always like to point out you see agriculture dropped to 2% from 41%. You might say, whoa, what happened there? You know, we, uh, are we starving to death now? Uh, no, not hardly. We're feeding more people with 2% than we were with 41% due to technology and the service that's, that's uh, tied into that as well. You know, students are interested in STEM, but not in skilled trades. And an example of that was in 2016, uh, a study was uh, conducted with 150,000 students from grades six through 12. And they were asked, how many of you would like a skilled trade career? And you can see a whopping 3% said, yes, this is what I'm looking for, sign me up. That same group then was asked, how many of you are interested in a STEM career? Quite a change, over 45% said, yes, this is, what, this is what I wanna do. There lies the disconnect. 
students do not see a connection between STEM and skilled trades. Unfortunately, we have educators that don't see that either. Uh, they, they tend to think of STEM as more of a white collar rather than a blue collar, or as I like to say, all collars, uh, because STEM permeates um, our economy. <clears throat> STEM career growth, um, as you can see on, on the uh, screen in front of you, the STEM jobs will grow by 13% in the next seven years. All other jobs will grow about 9%. But the more glaring difference is the hourly wage. You can see over double at almost $39 an hour as opposed to $19 an hour. We can take that a step further when we look at annual earnings. STEM occupations, almost $87,000 a year. Non-STEM occupations, a little over 38,000. So you can see the, the STEM occupations have a huge impact on salary potential. About a fifth of the jobs in the country right now, a little over 20% require a bachelor's degree for entry. Another startling statistic is that almost half of college graduates go into occupations that don't require a college degree. You know, we have a lot of people walking around with, with uh, bachelor's degrees or even master's degrees that aren't using them. What a shame that is when you think in terms of the amount of time, effort, and money that they invested uh, for that degree and then didn't want it, didn't need it, didn't use it. You know, that's, that's kind of sad. I always speak to, uh, to uh, counselor groups, administrative groups, CTE groups. I talk to them a lot about the difference between the old SMART and the new SMART. And so what is the old SMART? Well, the old SMART, get into the best school you possibly can. You know, some of you may, be, may have experienced that with your, your parents when they said, you're, you're going to college. You know, you're going to college, that's it. And um, <clears throat> so what they want, you know, what, what the idea is, is to find the best college you can. And then once you get in, figure out what it is you wanna do, because many of you, like myself, probably changed majors once, maybe twice, maybe three times. But once you finally figure out what you want to do, then you walk out the front door with degree in hand, go, here I am, world hire me. And we know today that just doesn't work. And you might say, what's so ridiculous? Who would even think of that today? Well, you re recall the uh, admission scandal that just we're just now coming out of where people are serving jail time and paying huge fines because they paid high amounts of money for their sons and daughters to go to a prestigious school like Stanford, USC, places like that. What's really ironic about it is that some of the uh, students didn't even wanna go to college in the first place or didn't need to go, but their parents were of the old smart thinking. So we graduate to the new smart, so what is that? Well, the first thing we need to do is find out what, what do kids wanna do? You know the question we ask every little kid, what do you wanna be when you grow up? I always challenge counselors, how many of you have asked a sophomore, junior, or senior lately, what do you want to be when you grow up? Of course, they look at you very indignant, like, well, I am grown up. But, you know, we, we don't ask that question, you know. And I, yeah, I used to always say, your passion. But what if you're not very good at your passion? We have to think in terms of what are you good at, you know. Then once we figure that out, then we look for what program do they need? Do they need to go to a college or, or um, four-year institu institution of some type, a university? Do they need to go to a community college? Do they need to go to a technical trade school? You know, that, and there's a lot of difference in time. You're talking anywhere from, you know, maybe a few months up to several years. We don't want to mislead students at this point. And then once we figure out what program they need, then we figure out what school they should be in. So that's the new SMART and, and it works because this way students are happy. 65% of college uh, students drop out. And people say, oh yeah, it's because of money. No, it's not. It's because they made the wrong choice. They picked something that they really didn't want to do or that fit them. The rule of 127, many of you probably have never heard of this before, but the rule of 127 is a very simple rule, but it applies here. 127 together totals 10. So for every 10 careers that are out there available today, only one requires an advanced degree, meaning a master's degree or higher. Two out of the 10 careers available today 
require a bachelor's degree. Seven of the 10 careers available today only require a competency-based credential or an associate's degree. Seven out of 10. Yet, we're pushing students into college to get a four-year degree at a 70% clip. So you can see what we're doing is exactly the opposite of what we should be doing. The economy is telling us we need skilled trades, we need skilled workers, yet we're ignoring that and that's why we have such a shortage today. Skilled trades require STEM capabilities. You know, we have to work with parents and students. I work with educators all the time trying to to teach them that, you know, all of you live in a home of some type. I'll bet you hope that that uh, those carpenters had some uh, STEM skills, that they could read a yardstick, read a ruler, read a tape measure, understand what a square house means. You know, we have to understand that skilled trades is STEM. We also have to get rid of the myth, university for all. We have to get rid of that. You know, it's just not applicable today. Not every student wants to go to the college or university. The other thing that I would challenge you with is, you know, get rid of the word college. I didn't say get rid of college, so get rid of the word college. Use post-secondary education, because when you say college, it pigeonholes kids. They tend to think, oh gosh, if, I, if I'm not going to college, I'm a failure. That's, that's just not true. You know, a welding school or a, an auto trade school, uh, CNC school is just as important as the student wants to go to the university. And then we have to remember what employers are looking for. They're looking for competency-based credentials. They want to know what you bring to the table that can, that can help them. The second part of my agenda today is opportunities in the transportation industry. I don't care what you're talking about. If it's a car, if it's a truck, a tractor, a combine, an ATV, um, a boat, a motorcycle, I don't care. These are all rolling computers. They have high levels of technology built into them. You know, you all may have, you know, newer cars that have the backup camera, for instance. You know, that backup camera has, I just wonder how many lives have been, have been uh, saved by having that camera. We all have heard the horror stories of somebody backing over a child, sometimes their own child. How horrible is that? But with the backup cameras, they are so good, so clear, we can see everything behind us. Um, the, um, the blind spot indicators. We've all been honked at before. We start to pull over and it's like, where did that person come from? Can't, didn't know they were there. You know, that saves an accident. Um, the, um, all the, um, uh, the sensors that are on these vehicles to, uh, to avoid crashes, um, you know, uh, the voice activated navigation, I can go on and on, but these are safety measures. The problem is, we don't have technicians to work on these things. We love this technology. Now you look at this and say, well, I don't need all that stuff. Well, you say that until you have it. And then it's like, wow, how did I get along without it? You know, I've got an old Ford F-150 pickup that doesn't have the backup camera. And boy, every time I get in it, that's the first thing I'm looking for is where's that at? How did I get, how, how did I get this far without it? There are over 1.3 billion vehicles on the road today worldwide. 273 million of those right here in the United States. So it's easy to see why we're going to need over 1.1 million technicians by 2028. That's mind boggling. You have to remember the average age of a technician right now is 55, 56 years of age. That's the average age. These people are going to be retiring soon and we've got to, re to replace them. And then finally, we get to the third part of our agenda, Universal Technical Institute's Career Pathways. Who is UTI? Well, uh, Bob and Lee explained to you earlier, you know, we are the leading provider of technicians in the country. We have 12 campuses nationwide. Uh, we place over four out of five of our graduates into their chosen field. You notice I said in their chosen field, uh, not in a field. We, we place them in the field that they chose. And we have over 220,000 graduates and that number climbs daily as we, um, as we get more technicians out into the field. Is it enough? No, but we're trying to get there. <clears throat> Our training programs, we train in eight different areas, auto, diesel, collision, motorcycle, marine, NASCAR, CNC, and welding. 
But what's important here is that when we meet with a student and their family, and by the way, that's how, that's how you get into UTI. You can't just come, you have to be invited. And we do an interview with, uh, with the, the student and their family. But we talk to them about what do they like to do? What, what, what excites them? But we also talk to them about occupations within occupations. You know, a student may not necessarily want to turn wrenches. That's okay. They love cars. They want to work with cars, but maybe they don't want to actually turn a wrench. Well, they could be a service rider, you know, or maybe they could go to work for an insurance company as a claims adjuster. You know, insurance companies love our graduates because they know the car inside and out. You hit a deer, it looks like, well, gosh, I dented the hood, the fender, the bumper. But what you don't see is all the internal damage that happened, all the sensors that were damaged, the radiator, all these things, and, and a uh, technician is going to know that stuff. So these are all the training programs that we, that we offer. We use industry-aligned technology. What we do, what that means is we align ourselves to the dealerships. So when a student leaves our school and goes into a dealership, they're very familiar with the surroundings. We combine online classroom with hands-on training. That's what happens in a dealership. They cannot afford to send technicians off to get training any longer. It's too expensive. They lose money in downtime and paying for the training. So they do it online. That's why we do it. So that way, when a technician, one of our graduates walks in there, they know already how, how this works. Our education model is quite a bit different too, in that we do three-week courses. We do one course at a time. We're teaching competency-based credentials. And so when they, when they learn that competency, then they are ready to move on to the next one in three-week segments. And that's how we build our technician, so-called from the ground up. Of course, in the light of the pandemic, we've had to change things. You know, uh, some schools have had to go to a blended learning or hybrid learning, whatever you want to call it. We didn't have to change. We were already doing it. But we had to change is to be CDC compliant. We had to make changes in our campuses, which we've done. Uh, we have assigned doors for students to enter and leave. We have temperature checks of everybody in the building. We require face coverings. Uh, we've reduced the lab sizes. That way we can maintain social distancing and the six foot separation that CDC requires. Um, we require our students to wash their hands often. We clean and disinfect constantly to make sure our facility is, is as clean as we can possibly make it. And then we offer uh, phone support um, where we, we can do things for students and their families on the phone rather than in person so they can feel safe. So once again, CDC compliance is very important to us. We're doing virtual presentations now for schools that, that don't allow anybody to come in. Many schools are doing hybrid learning, some are doing total virtual learning. So we have something for everybody. So we have, the, we have live and in-person um, workshops. Um, we use Microsoft Teams or Zoom. Um, if you have a different format that you'd rather use, we can use that as well. Uh, we, we want to accommodate you any way we possibly can and create the life you've imagined. And as you can see on the right, a little bit of what we cover. Some of the stuff like we've covered today here, talking about the economy, talking about the skilled trades gap, um, you know, figuring out why, all the, um, the, uh, the career pathways and the different uh, types of post-secondary education that students can get. We try to cover all that in our workshops to give students a more informed decision uh, so they can make a more informed decision of, of what they want to do. We do have a national presence. That's important for a couple of reasons. Number one is the fact that you'd be hard pressed to walk into a dealership and say UTI and they wouldn't know who we are. We're, we're known nationwide. But the second part and just as important is the fact that you may go to um, the Sacramento campus and then you decide that you want to work down in Southern California. Well, we have UTIs down there too, so we can assist you in, get, in gaining employment down there. Or if you want to move to uh, Chicago, Illinois, or if you want to move to uh, Dallas, Texas, you know, that, th that would give you the opportunity to be able to do that and, and um, land the career that you want. We have over 35 alliances with, with uh, manufacturers. You can see these are the big dogs of the industry. As I often say to uh, educators, we're not training students for, for uh, Jiffy Lube. We're training students to go to work for these type of companies because they're longstanding, stable companies. They offer great careers and great career 
uh, great, uh, you know, uh, benefit packages for our students. One of the things that we really like to do is we like to uh, show off our graduates. You know, um, it's one thing for a student to be told from, from one of us, but from one of their peers, that's huge. And um, you can see these three on here, they all have a smile on their face because A, they're doing what they love to do. You know, and we talked about that before as part of the new SMART, finding what it is that students want to do and then helping them to get there. But the other thing these three have in common is a work ethic because UTI is not easy. We, we get our students prepared for the industry. We don't let them slide by because we want them to be prepared. This is why dealerships want our graduates because they know they are prepared uh, to go to work. And um, so that's why we use our, our graduates as a way to get that message across to new and prospective students. We offer grants, scholarships and loans. We offer, offer over $15 million in scholarships to help make our education more affordable. You know, that's important to families, uh, especially nowadays. So we, we offer that for, uh, for our prospective students. Um, we are Title IV funded. So therefore, uh, you fill out a FAFSA to see if you qualify for financial aid. And if you do, we have, like I said, the scholarships that are available, over $15 million. We also have housing grants. We have institutional grants. We have third-party programs to help in case of emergencies. I skipped number five on purpose. We have over 4,500 employers involved in TRIP, which is tuition reimbursement incentive programs. Companies like Penske, like AutoNation, uh, and smaller dealerships do the same thing too, where they offer a package to our graduates upon graduation to help them pay off their student loans or for relocation, where they need the money for. No, they don't hand them a check for $10,000. And these programs can be anywhere from five, 10, 15, 20, $25,000, depending upon the, uh, the uh, dealership. But they give it to them in incremental amounts, maybe two, three, four hundred dollars at a time, and they can use that to pay off their student loans or whatever they they want to do with that money. So, um, so that's an important factor so that students can actually get the, a lot of their education paid for. However, you have to remember these aren't just given away. Uh, dealerships want top quality technicians, so they're going to look at things like your attendance, your professionalism, your grades. Those are all very important. I'm a retired educator. I know what you guys do on a daily basis. Um, we know, and I know especially the importance of counselors and what you all do out there. Um, high school students need to understand uh, where they fall in the, in the rule of 127. They need to understand about career readiness and career pathways. They need to understand, you know, what is available to them out there. And we know that you guys do that. How do we help? We support you in that. We love to partner with counselors. Uh, we can host your students at open houses or we can visit your school. As I mentioned earlier, we do, um, we can do virtual workshop workshops. We can do live workshops. We can do virtual tours. We can do a lot of things to support what you're doing. We also want to share current career pathways in the, in the eight major STEM fields that we offer. Um, and, you know, and jobs that are hiring today. All right. And then get, explain the scholarship opportunities and, and how school can be affordable to, for students. <clears throat> You can find us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube. We're on the website, uti.edu. And we also are, are um, on television commercials as well. And then finally, this is my contact information that, uh, that you can reach out to me with. Uh, uh, you know, it's my phone number. That's my email address. Um, I was asked by uh, Tracy Kilby. He is the uh, regional admissions director at the Sacramento campus and maybe on this call. He was on the call uh, this morning, but he wanted me to mention a couple things to you. Number one is that the Sacramento campus is open for personal guided tours on the weekends because of the COVID, obviously. Uh, but they have to, you have to contact a representative, which I can help you to do, and to uh, schedule a tour. And then finally, remember that the summer schedule for 2021 is filling up rapidly. That'll be our big start for, uh, for seniors this year. So don't delay on the application process. Make sure you get your, your seat saved. Um, along with finishing the application to UTI, you need to finish your FAFSA, get that done as quickly as possible so that you'll be eligible for the Cal Grant. Remember that the deadline is March 1st for that. So 
Anyway, I, I thank you so much for your time uh, this afternoon. I know you're busy people, so thank you so much. I'm hoping that you gleaned something from this presentation today. As I said, that's my contact information. Please feel free to reach out to me with comments, questions, whatever you want to know. I thank you for your time. Have a good evening. All right, great. Thank you. We are now going to open up for uh, the question and answer portion of our presentation here. Um, and Dr. Coyle, one of the first questions came in and says, uh, if we wanted to contact uh, someone from Universal Technical Institute to help our students, uh, you know, learn more about your school, should they go to the UTI website or uh, contact you directly? Well, they can do either one. I'm, I'm open either way. If they go to the website, all you have to do is make an inquiry and tell what you're looking for. Hey, I'd like to have a rep call me about a, a, a virtual workshop or an uh, in-person workshop. Well, you do that. But you can also reach out to me. Uh, you know, you can send a, uh, an email to me. You can uh, text me. You can call me, whatever you want to do. And uh, let me know what you're looking for. I will make sure I get in touch with Tracy or the rep that's involved, and uh, we'll get you fixed up. Dr. Coyle, this is Bob again. Um, the second question has to do with comparisons with community or junior, junior college programs, specifically cost comparison and program comparisons. Well, I get this question all the time with community colleges, and you know, there, there's, um, there's really not that much, much difference as far as costs overall. You know, when you look at init initial costs, uh, you would say that you would have more of an investment at UTI than you would at the uh, community college. But uh, you have to look at the total picture, the ROI factors and everything that's involved. You have to remember that at the community college or in a college or university, you're going to spend anywhere from, from two to three years in community college to four to six years in a college or university. At UTI, you're going to be there approximately 10 to 17 months, give or take, on the program that you want to take. Um, you you um, have to remember, too, that you're going to be out working uh, at the age of 19, maybe 20 at the latest. If you go right out of high school, you're out working while your friends are still at the community college or at the university, still going to school spending money while you're, while you're making money. So that's huge. Um, another thing I'll point out is if you're in search of an associate's degree, you can get your AOS uh, associate's degree at the Sacramento campus. So you can do that and do it in less time than you would the college or university. But the biggest equalizer, in my opinion, is the trip employers, because that way you have an opportunity to get your tuition reimbursed. Um, but once again, you got to work hard to earn that. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Coyle. That concludes today, the formal portion of today's session. Let me very quickly outline a few housekeeping matters for the registrants on today's call. First of all, the Match America Foundation will compile and forward a set of all questions related to today's session related to admissions and, and financial aid, et cetera. Uh, second, uh, IAF has recorded this session and will forward this, this recording to any and all of the registrants for follow-up. If you might have missed something, want to double check something, you heard something, you want to, you want to hear it again. Uh, third, IAF will place this session on our website, www.imagine-america.org, with very clear download instructions. Uh, also, finally, we're going to be con conducting a survey so we can determine possible next topics and locations for these webinars. Before closing, I'd like to thank each and every one of the participants in today's session the school counselors and the teachers for taking time out of their very busy schedules, very, very hectic schedules uh, with school starting back up and, and with the COVID situation being what it is. We really appreciate you giving us your time. A second, I'd like to thank Dr. Coyle for sharing with us his presentation today and encourage you to contact him directly with any questions you may have from this, this particular presentation. On behalf of the Imagine America Foundation, Lee Doubleday and myself, I'd like to thank you and I'd like to wish you a very good evening. Bye-bye.